The column tool has been upgraded considerably in version 10 also. So if I left mouse click on it in the info box or default settings fill in and as I come along the info box I'm just going to go over inserting beams first. So the first icon is a simple insertion point so if I left mouse click on the floor plan it just places a column from the middle. So if I want to change that I can open the dialog box by double clicking on either icon and change the insert point by this little dialog here. So if I want it from the bottom left hand corner I click there and place it like that and I'll just do one from the top right hand corner as well and if I wanted to insert it on an angle let's say all your beams were at 15 degrees I just push OK there and they all get inserted at 15 degrees the next method is I'll just uncheck that first put that back to zero put that back to the center push OK the next method is the rotated angle so first of all I'll left mouse click on the floor plan and we can see that it's placed it or it's anchored the column but depending on the angle that I move my mouse to that's the angle that it will be placed luckily we have smart guides as well now so if I hold the shift key down I can constrain it to certain angles if I want but if I put the tracker on we can actually see the angle that the beam is going to be put on so let's say I wanted it 30 degrees I just left mouse click again and it gets placed the last method of placing a beam is the revolve method and this is actually greyed out at the moment to make that active we have to drill down into the column palette and change it to an angled or tilting column and change it to a complex profile as soon as we push OK now that becomes available and this method provides a three-step placement process so first of all you click to place the column second you rotate it around its own ver vertical axis and click and then third you revolve it around its own axis and then you click it to complete it so we can see that the crosshairs are displayed differently and if I I might just angle that a little bit change it to 80 and that's the effect that that has so I'm just going to delete all these and move on so if I double click on the column tool open the default settings palette and under geometry and positioning we can define the column we're about to create at the moment the column height is 3 meters that's from the bottom to the top the same way that walls is dimensioned over here we have the relative base height and this defines the distance that the wall sits above the current story and then the next one down we have the absolute base height which is how high this wall is above project zero this is where we can define the angle that we place the column on the floor plan in case you don't want it perpendicular to your workspace over here then over here we have three types of columns we have square or rectangular circular and a special profile which is new to version 10 if I just stick with the rectangular method the dialog boxes on the right hand side here allow us to define the dimensions on floor plan of the column at the moment it's a square column if I uncheck the links it can be a rectangular column and then the next one the circular column if I click on the circular column only one of those boxes is highlighted the other one is grayed out so if I click back onto the rectangular profile we can also have the material either wrapping around the column or allow the column to be freestanding for the column to be wrapped around by the wall it must be a composite material because a single skin won't wrap around both sides of the column just to show you what I mean by that I'll start with just a rectangular column 
and with no wrapping push OK and I place that on the floor plan we can see that the composite hasn't wrapped around the column now I'm going to wrap it so that wall will wrap around that column we can see the effect there now if I put a veneer as well around it I can put a veneer with no wrapping that's the effect that that has and then and finally I can place a column that has a veneer into a composite wall and the skin in the composite wall will wrap around the column and the veneer so if I just do that and I place one in there that's the effect that it has one thing I didn't do just then is designate or define the thickness of that veneer so if I just go back to the column tool and next to the veneer tick box I can change the thickness of the veneer there and that veneer is a uniform thickness all the way around that column next we can have a vertical or slanted column and this is new for version 10 which is um, a lot of fun now I'm just going to go down to the floor plan and section and collapse that and then drag this out and collapse the cross parameters and go to the core structure under core structure this is the fill that we've used for our column and I can change that to any fill that I like and under the cut surfaces here we define the core fill pens and the background pens then for the veneers we also define the veneer pens and the fills and there's a fair bit of control over there over how your column will look under outlines we can define the uncut line the overhead lines and overhead lines and finally the crosshair parameters so we can actually choose to mark the column by just a straight cross a slash plane or have a crosshair there and the distance when it's a crosshair we can choose the distance from the center of the column or the length on the outside of the beam and the column cross line pen so we've got a lot of control there as well and those options change as we change what we actually are using so as I collapse that and collapse that if I go to the model here's the material once again we can choose any material that you've made or already listed in ARCHICAD and we can also list and label every column so the layer that we're on is on the structural bearing layer and as I push OK we're all done there another thing I'd like to explore is the new function in ARCHICAD 10 of the inclined or slanted column so if I grab the column here we can see that's just a straight square column it's three meters high and it's 350 millimeters wide by a meter and then over here we can see that it's a vertical column and if I want to slant it I can just click on this icon here conversely I can go to the original column icon and over here I've got that, those same functions so if I wanted to change the degree or the pitch of the slant I can just change it there so we can see that's updated straight away if I wanted to change the angle of this in the floor plan I click on the middle node and click on the second last icon here and over here I can rotate it in any direction that I like one thing that's worth noting is that the column will rotate on its own axis so it will it's intelligent enough to know that it can only slant in one direction and it's almost like there's headlights on the front of the beam and always knows which is which way is ahead and if I wanted to drag it out I wanted to line it up with a slab I can line it up visually like that or I can actually get it to snap to it's probably easier to do from the 3d window which we'll go into just in a second if I wanted to further edit that I can I'll just take this out so it's, it's inclined a little bit more and then if we have a look at the pitch at the moment it's 50.99 degrees and if I want to make the beam shorter I can just or taller I can just select that the last icon in the pet palette and we'll probably find now that 
the beam is now 1849. Now of course this can be edited in this toolbox as well. So if I just make that 3 meters again and I can change the pitch of it also here and the size at any time. But if I go to the elevation window we can see that we have the same functions in the elevation window. So if I select it there the first icon lets me change the height of that in a vertical plane and the second icon lets me extend that along the plane or along the inclination path of the beam. Over there my section line runs out over there so I might just drag that back a little and move that up straight up. So as you can see we can edit that in floor plan, elevation, through the tool palettes and the 3D window which we will jump to now. Now I just wanted to go over the options for editing columns in the 3D window. So if we select the column, this is a complex profile and it's on an angle at the moment and as we can see it's 3 meters high. So if I click on the center node I have three options across the top. First one is I can change the angle so we can see the hairline rotating along the line that I'm as I try and change the angle of the beam going the opposite direction but if I hold the shift key down it will stay perpendicular to where it was. So over here we notice that the height isn't changing but it's being changed on that plane so it's actually sticking to that three meter high plane and if I select the next node down it's now editing that or moving that on a vertical plane we can see it's going up and down that wall and I don't have to hold the shift key down for that and I can even make it taller than three meters. The final option is I can extend it along the path of the inclination so if I want to take that for example up to this node here again the little tick will come up and we'll see that's rising to a height of three meters so if I deselect it we can see how that's now three meters so the three options are basically if we move it along a certain height which is the three meters there the other option is up and down in a vertical plane here we've got the height a little bit different it's um, 1925 now and the third option is stretching it along that inclination so they're the three options when we click on the corner nodes of a column the first tool allows us to extend or reduce the height of the column along the inclination as you can see there it's now 2 meters 217 if I take that back up to the 3 meter mark secondly this allows us to extend the profile sideways or long ways at the moment this is not responding because it hasn't been set up with any vertical or horizontal stretch options to do that I'm going to have to change this column to perhaps a square column. Here we have a couple more tools. These are the two that weren't available in the custom setting. So over here once again I can extend or reduce the height of it along the inclination of the column. Secondly it allows me to rotate along its axis. So if I wanted to rotate the beam we can see it's 350 by 1 meter wide. If I undo that we can see it's still 350 by 1 meter which means I've just rotated. I haven't changed the column physically. Thirdly I can extend the width of the column. If I undo that and I can also extend the length of it. Now if the tracker bar palette is there I can actually type in that distance. That's running just off the screen there. Um, I can type in the distance that I would like to extend it. In this case I won't. So 
they're basically the options for editing a column in 3D. So we can see that some of the tools have identical functions between the center node and the corner node. However, it's worth taking note of these differences in case you're trying to click on the wrong node to complete some sort of function. All the icons along the bottom row are similar to other icons that are common throughout the rest of Arcad, so I won't bother going over those in this particular part of the DVD. There's a detailed section on making complex profile beams, columns and walls in another movie on this DVD, but I'm just going to quickly go over making a column that's a complex profile. So if I go on to the column there and I select this icon here, this is where we actually select our custom profile and there's a bunch of them already in there. But to create a new one to place in there, I have to go to the Design, Complex Profiles, Profile Manager. Now, once the Profile Manager opens up, we can choose to make a wall, beam or column. So I'm going to uncheck those, just going to make a column. So I check New and then this little palette comes up here. I can make any shape that I like as long as it's made out of a fill. So on the drafting layer I might use some lines and this is explained in another movie. I might use some lines just to create a quick oval and then I'm going to select that and drag that into the center because I want the point of origin to be from the center of that fill. Now I might just draw a little circle and grab that and make a copy of that and then I might just trim that and that bit, trim that bit, trim that bit and then I'm going to grab the fill tool, hold my space bar down and click on that. Now that's the profile I want to keep. Now I just want to store that profile as oval less okay so store the new profile and then I can get out of there. Now as soon as I've done that I can go to my column tool and select from the custom profile oval less. So as soon as I go OK, I can actually place that column. It's actually inclined at the moment, which I don't want at this stage. So I'm going to change it to a vertical column. And there's my column there. So if I actually select that, I can turn the fills off, of course but we can see the hairlines are straight through the center, which is what I was trying to do. Then if I push F4 on the Mac and F5 on the PC to go to my 3D window, we can see there's my custom column. It's a very, it's a very simple tool to use. As well as all the columns that we can create using the column tool, there are many more to be found under the object tool or in the Archicad library. So if I click on the object tool and check find library parts and type in column and press the find button we have many columns that are in the library also and these are all parametric as well and they are probably columns that, that would be difficult to create using the regular column tool. So there are many there to look through as well and it's worth checking these out as well.